Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday. Um, I'm sure at this time of year people are looking around for that Christmas gift for the orchid lover or the orchid enthusiast who would like to start growing orchids. And you're left with the choices at your local supermarkets and specialty supermarkets of Phalaenopsis, Cattleya, Uncidium, and maybe Zygopetalum. These orchids are great uh, for beginners, but they're just common. I want to touch on a few orchids that are not common that you would have to go look for from a, uh, you know, a local grower or a grower that you would have to order online or so forth. These orchids are either just as easy or easier to care for than those you would find at the stores. Uh, the light levels, I'll give the light levels in basically whatever direction window that you would need to grow these. So, without further ado, let's start off. Looking at this guy here, you probably say, wow, it looks like a peperomia or some sort of house plant. Well, I mean, they are house plants, but this one is actually an orchid. This one is called Ludicia discolor, commonly known as a jewel orchid. These are not readily available, which they should be, and uh, it's a shame that they are not available because these guys are actually extremely easy to grow in the home. They require almost little light. You could grow them in a north or northeast window. Uh, they are very soft, unlike other orchids. They're very, it's almost like a really soft, fleshy stolen that they grow on. Um, I mean, it's really a rhizome, but they feel like a stolen. And it crawls. As you can see, it's trying to crawl out of the pot. They are extremely just not fussy. Like, they are really not fussy. The only thing they will be fussy about is if you end up putting them in a bright window where they will burn and they will just drop all their leaves and die. So I would suggest putting them somewhere where they get very little light, almost as much light as a common house plant like your philodendrons, your pothos, um, even ferns. They will tolerate that sort of light. The one thing they do like is a nice, um, well-draining potting soil that retains moisture. So you can pot these in potting soil as long as it drains well and you're not overwatering them. If it has a moisture retaining element in the mix, then you can kind of hold off on watering and be kind of lazy about it. I have mine potted in sphagnum moss and fine fir bark, and that's it. Um, sphagnum moss you can get in any local hardware store like Home, Home Depot or Lowe's. It's usually, I would suggest you get Better Grow when you buy whatever I'm suggesting, because if you get these other brand in a blue bag, it is not good. As you can see right now, um, this is normally what they're grown for, is these pretty red veined leaves, but they will, flower and I have lots of little flowers coming on this uh, very shortly. Um, it, they're just little white flowers and they're really something that's n like they're not what you expect from an orchid but they are beautiful and like I said these are non-fussy really really easy probably one of the easiest orchids you could ever care for so if you could find it at either a local grower or if you happen to go to one of the local shows in the new year pick up a Ludicia discolor or any other of the jewel orchids there are others called Stenorhychus there's one called Macadese Petola, which is gorgeous. It's a gorgeous little plant. Of course, Macadese will want to be in more of a terrarium setting, but if you could provide that, it's an excellent plant to have. Moving on, let's go with this guy here. What I got right here is a gift from a dear friend of mine, Wade from Wade's Orchids. This is a den Dendrochylum. Now, Dendrochylum orchids are often known as chain orchids. As you can see that their flowers grow in these long, almost like um, pendulous racemes that have a herringbone pattern with their flowers. Now their flowers are very tiny, almost nondescript, but they are beautiful. I don't think they're, it's not scented. Oh wait, no. Vaguely scented of like a uh, citrus. Uh, this one is called Dendrochylum formosanum. Um, there are many varieties of Dendrochylum. They all have the right, uh, or all the similar care. They like to be moist all the time. So this one, just like the jewel orchid, is in sphagnum moss. They will prefer an east to a southeast window, but if you put it in a southeast window during the hot summer season, you may want to put a sheer curtain in front of it like you would do in an African violet to prevent the leaves from getting burned because their leaves are very tender. Uh, try to be watch the leaves for uh, spotting. Uh, if it sp starts to get spotting on the leaves, I would just clean it with some... Uh, a real dilute solution of hydrogen peroxide and Dawn soap uh, or vinegar. Um, other than that, these guys are non-fussy. You would feed them normally. Um, I'm sorry I didn't touch on the other one. When you feed the jewel orchid, going back to the jewel orchid, you could feed that regularly like you would um, a dilute fertilizer, um, 
every two weeks, uh, real weak half strength or full strength once a month, but flush it well. Same with these guys. I would give them a diluted uh, fertilizer half strength every two weeks. During the growing season, you may want to up it for every once a week, but you're going to want to flush the pot out real well to get the salts out of it. Uh, other than that, it will reward you with all these little tiny yellow flowers, or they come in white, or they come in peach, or they come in uh, mauve, or they come in red. So this is a really easy one to grow. They are not fussy. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to this guy here, something you guys will probably never really see. <laughs> this little guy here, I'll show you the flowers up close. It's in bloom. This little guy here, I hope they're coming in focus, but um, this is called a bulbophyllum. Now, bulbophyllums are the largest, uh, the largest uh, group of the orchids. They almost have like over 2,000 different species of bulbophyllum in the orchid um, world. So you would have many different varieties of bulbophyllum. They all have different care. Uh, this particular one is called Bulbophyllum blumii. It is a very easy one to grow. It is a low light Bulbophyllum. It would like an east window or a southeast window, a west window, but you have to kind of protect it during the growing season when you have these orchids in south or west windows during the, um, the real hot seasons like spring and summer. They are kind of, like their leaves are kind of tender. Uh, most bulbophyllums uh, have all different sorts of leaves. There's stiff leaves, soft leaves, short leaves, long leaves, long little creeping rhizomes. Like this one's really long with its rhizomes. They creep out real far. Um, they all have the pretty similar care. They like to be moist, but they also like to drain very well. Um, the only downside is to these things that some of them have very smelly flowers. This one it has a smell of like old gym socks. Now I know that somebody would be like, wow, why would I want that? Well, Reason is you can't really smell it unless you get your nose like way up in that flower. If your nose is down in that flower, you're gonna smell an old gym sock. But if you're away from it, you will not smell it. Um, these things are very it, like weird. Um, they come in all different types of flower shapes, but they're very beautiful. The flowers are not very long lived. They live about maybe a week to two weeks, but they're easy to care for. You would feed them regularly during the growing season. Uh, half strength fertilizer every two weeks if you're going liquid, or you can mix the, uh, the mix, which is usually either a fine fir bark mixed with sphagnum moss or just straight sphagnum and some perlite. Uh, mount them. You can mount them. You can have them in these little baskets, like this one's in a basket, these little teak baskets. Um, or just put them in a plastic pot, but you also want to make sure that you give them plenty of drainage and don't let them stay wet for very too long or they will rot. I re highly recommend Bulbophyllums if you want to try something different and odd. Uh, they can reward you. Um, the only thing is, like I said, if you leave them wet too long, they'll rot and get a, a fungal infection. Moving on, we're going to move on to this one here. This is If you guys live in the south, you guys see these a lot. These are the Vanda type orchids. Now, for the beginner, a gift would be a mini Vanda, such as this. This little guy here, I'm going to close the flowers. This is called a, Leo, a Neostylus Lucineri Bluebird. It is a hybrid, and I recommend hybrids for people because species can be very fussy. This one here is a hybrid of a Japanese orchid called the Wind Orchid, or Neophenicia falcata, now called Vandophenicia falcata. Why do they always change the names? Um, this one is really easy to grow. It is a highlight orchid, so you could hang this in a pure east or southeast window. Um, you could hang it in a southeast window without any protection from the sun during the winter time. However, uh, during the active growing period of spring and summer, you would put it in a south window, but you would probably protect it from the direct rays of the sun in the hot afternoon. It will take direct sun in the morning, but afternoon you want to give it a little shade. Um, it will start showing these little purple spots on the body that it's nothing wrong, that it's just telling you that the plant is happy, it's receiving enough light. Um, this thing is so easy that I'm growing it under fluorescent lights and it's blooming with two flower spikes. They will often grow two flower spikes, one flower spike, and grow many flowers. Um, they are fragrant. It smells like jasmine. Uh, it has this pretty purplish blue color, which is often called cerulea. They will like to have an open basket, like what it's in now, to have their roots come dangling down. They do not like to be confined to a pot. If you do put it in a pot, put it in terracotta, and don't put a lot of potting medium in with it, like a couple of chunks of lava rock or fir bark will be fine. But these guys prefer to hang. They want to have their roots dangle. 
but care for them is you would water them a lot during the growing season and uh, mist them regularly with a spray bottle. Uh, dunk them. If you have the opportunity, dunk them once a week with a um, diluted fertilizer in it and just let their roots turn perfectly green and then you can hang them back up again once they've drained. Other than that, they are extremely easy and not really fussy orchids and I find them to be really easy to grow. Moving on. Talk about these guys. Now you can find these sometimes, but not this variety. You could find what's I call dendrobiums. You could find them at Trader Joe's. They often have what's called a dendrobium nobly. The reason why I don't want to talk about those is because they require a resting period that is often hard to give them during the winter season um, or the cold season. These are dendrobiums, but these are called the Latoria dendrobiums, and they come from, I believe, Madagascar and like areas that are really hot and tropical. They do not get a rest period. They are very similar to the regular dendrobiums. If you know, they're long canes with leaves at the top. They look like bamboo stalks. They're very decorative, even without their flowers. Their care is very simple. They like bright light, so east, southeast, west window, um, obviously protected in the summertime from the hot rays of the sun. They flower very regularly, sometimes once a year, sometimes they're free flowering. They can flower whenever. They come in all shapes and sizes. This one is very small and compact, great for a window. This is a hybrid. This is also some uh, from, uh, this is actually grown by H&R Nurseries in Hawaii, but it was a gift from a friend of mine, Wade from Wade's Orchids. This is called Dendrobium Nano Chip. Um, the little tiny flower is very pretty. It's got like a cream color with white and then purple spotting on the back. They're probably gonna bounce around because they're so small. They bloom probably around this time of year. Um, they can often bloom multiple times, but they'll have one profound blooming season. Um, their care is they are potted in a little fur, fur bark, real small fur bark and perlite. They want to be watered well, but let them drain very well and let them dry out between waterings. So you would water them really well, let them dry, water them again. Feeding them, dilute fertilizer once every two weeks, or in the springtime and summer when they're really in active growth mode, you can up it to once a week but you do want to flush the pot from the residual salts that will build up. Um, the only thing these guys actually, the problem with these, the only problem I found is dendrobiums like their roots crowded. So you have to keep them in tiny little pots. You do never want to over pot a dendrobium because it will suffer root rot. Um, they can get top heavy. So then you may want to add like a cash pot or another pot over this to kind of hold it up. But if you get a compact variety like this, you may not have to worry about that. And I don't think this one will really fall over anytime soon. I mean, he's perfectly fine in this little pot. And he can grow happy in this pot for many, many years. Um, like I said, care is very easy. They're not fussy. They're in a very, they're almost like a newer type. I mean, they've been discovered a long time, but becoming real popular in the orchid growing community. And they can make fantastic house plants. So I suggest you, if you're looking for an orchid, look for a, a dendrobium, a Latoria type dendrobium. They have some other ones. If you want to look up really weird flowers, look up Dendrobium spectabili. That is called the alien orchid, and you'll see why if you look it up. So this is just a small idea for people out there looking for orchid gifts. If you're looking for something odd and for the orchid enthusiast or someone who you know grows orchids, these orchids are just different than the norm, uh, than their normal phalaenopsis that you get at grocery stores. So uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm always here. If you have another uh, question, you can also contact a friend of mine, Wade from Wade's Orchids. He's always around to have you know answer your questions when you need to um i hope you guys have a merry christmas and a happy new year